Helldivers 2 has come under fire once again, and this time it's from a pretty unlikely source. It's from us. Let's dive into why today was the lowest player count Helldivers has seen since launch. In order to really dive into this correctly, I want to show you guys the actual data of user base and what's going on with everything. So you can see here at release, started pretty low, the 91,000, but that's pretty great for a game just starting out, especially from a no-name developer. Quickly went up to 400k, 440k at really its peak, but since then, we've seen a steady decline. This isn't exactly unusual for games. Obviously, we've got the account linking. That happened on May 3rd, Friday, May 3rd. That is a huge issue, and since then we have seen a drop-off from about 115,000 players to 60,000 players today. That's a pretty substantial drop-off, but you can see there's been spikes since the actual Sony issue, and it's not all tied to that. In order to properly talk about the expected deterioration of a player base, let's look at a couple of case studies here to show you exactly what games can expect, especially from a PvP and a PvE layout, when companies are doing their best to keep things updated. First and foremost, let's look at Elden Ring, a notoriously beloved game, and at its peak, it got 953,000 concurrent players, which is shortly after release. Kind of what you expect from these games that come from these big studios. But shortly after, month two, the player base had already been halved. And once again, halved again. It's not unusual for us to see this trend here. This is just general wear and tear of players getting exhausted with the game, especially when there's nothing new in it. Helldivers hasn't really put a bunch in it, all they've done is balance weapons. And that's a huge issue when you look at the overall interest of players. Especially for PvE, who cares about weapon balance? Let things be unbalanced, let us kill some things, who cares? We want a little bit more than that when it comes to content. To get into that, let's look into a couple of different first-person shooters that have done this exceedingly well. In order to really get an understanding of exactly what's going on here, let's look at another classic game here that is very similar in style and functionality to Helldivers 2, which is PUBG. PUBG got a massive spike of 3.257 million players concurrently at one point in time, right after release. After that, they've done their best to release on different platforms, including mobile, uh, Battle Royale bundle, uh, you know, a couple of random things here and there, free weekend, free week, and then finally it goes free to play. Essentially, PUBG has done what a lot of you know, developers have tried to do over the years, which is they've retained a pretty active player base. 400,000 active daily users is really nothing to shake a stick at, and it's still climbing to this day. What they did is they included more and more people. This is the big issue with the whole Sony development. They knocked off 180 countries where you can't play. That's a massive amount of the player base, especially considering if we go back to Helldivers 2, we are only talking about a spike of 458,000 concurrent players especially on Steam. There are more on uh, PlayStation, but just to get a little snippet of this here, there's a large player base that is on Steam. Where PUBG really shines is that they made it inclusive. They brought players into the game instead of excluding them. Sony has really hamstrung Helldivers 2 in this way, and it's really going to be difficult for them to get over this. But let's talk about another way that companies keep people engaged and actively playing their game. For this, let's look at Apex Legends, another shooter game that a lot of people have played over time and this is probably the craziest thing is that you're going to see a graph that is the exact inverse of what we've seen previously at release apex legends had 117,000 concurrent steam players pretty good but season eight huge spike season nine another huge spike all the way up to season 16 that's a massive two years after release and they were seeing their highest player numbers at yet the big change here is that Apex Legends is totally fine with releasing seasons, and I hope that Helldivers 2 has some semblance of new content. People want to come back again and again when something new gets added to the game. I don't care if the Eruptor gets buffed, or if the Dominator got shifted a little bit. It's fun if you're playing it every day already, but it's not exactly that carrot that's going to get us there to begin with. Apex Legends has gotten around this by continuously pushing new content out there. I think Helldivers 2 really needs to just put out some new story, and that's going to benefit things a ton. Right now, just doing those same repetitive missions over and over again, it's fun for sure, but the most important thing is that the game is fun because of the player base. When they exclude 180 countries and they take all these players out that were loving it before, 
what you're left with are the tryhards and the tryhards are kind of what kills most games believe me i like to grind games as much as anyone else i like to just destroy games as much as physically possible but when you're just left with a bunch of dudes who are super aggressive and just want to get to the end of the, the level and just try to do everything optimally there's not as much fun banter going back and forth and i feel like that's the biggest fallout from sony to piggyback on that let's look at another shooter that i think is probably the closest in relation to helldivers 2 which is destiny 2. destiny 2 once again at release saw its highest numbers on steam around 300,000, but they've seen a lot of spikes over the years namely spikes around each individual dlc being released beyond light and then over to the witch queen and finally to lightfall these massive player spikes are once again story driven People want to be interested in what we're playing. We don't want to just keep grinding over and over and over again, especially when in Helldivers 2, once you reach level 25, there's not really anything left to earn unless you're earning those war bonds and don't want to pay for them, which is totally fine, right? You don't have to pay for them to play the game. It just feels a little bit like we want something more to the game. I didn't care that they wanted us to link up my Sony account. I have a PlayStation account. I don't care. It took me literally two seconds and it was a blip on my radar. Everyone got upset about it, of course, but it just felt a little bit like a distraction from what actually is the problem here. Which is that players were leaving well before the Sony debacle. You're talking about a pretty substantial decline, where before Sony even hit, we already only had 25% of the players on release. And it was a pretty continuous drop that we were seeing here, with major patches kind of bumping things up once again. But since then, it's been a pretty steady decline. I know that everyone wants to jump on the Sony bandwagon of Sony's the problem, and sure, it's a difficult, difficult issue to deal with, but it's far from the first time that we've seen developers and publishers have an issue. If you're not familiar, Bloodborne, I think, is one of the best Souls games in modern times, and it had its fair shares of issues as well with the developer and publisher not seeing eye to eye. Specifically, everyone's been asking for a Bloodborne 2, including Miyazaki, the director of the game, saying that he would love to create another version of this game, either an optimized to 60 FPS version, or better yet, a version 2, second installment in the series, because it's a really rich and fun world, and it's completely different game style than any of the other Dark Souls kind of franchises, even Sekiro or anything like that. It's a really fun playstyle, and a lot of the player base is still very interested in that. The big issue is that Sony has all the rights to publish that game. So no matter what anyone wants to do, no one can make that game unless Sony signs off on it. And the fact that Sony shut down Sony Japan, pretty unlikely that Bloodborne is ever going to be made into a second game or even a remake. Publishers and developers not seeing eye to eye might seem like a small issue to begin with, but it's one of the more difficult issues in gaming. Furthermore, just today, Arrowhead CEO stepped down and a new CEO is stepping up. CEO says that he's more interested in doing gun balancing than anything else which is kind of a red flag for me because I really hope that he doesn't want to balance everything and give us nothing but just balances to a PvE game. Who cares? <laughs> it's PvE! We're fighting a computer, right? We're not fighting each other. Who cares about balances in the meta? We want something a little bit more to work towards. A little bit more than just a major task to work towards of take these planets back or something like that. Especially when that story feels so railroaded to begin with. It's never felt like we've had control over what's going to happen because the developers have basically told us, yeah, we're going to give you objectives, but no matter if you win or fail, you're probably going to go down the same path. It's going to be a different twist in the road, but you're going to get to the same end destination. We know that there's going to be a new enemy type entering the game probably in the next couple of weeks, hopefully, and hopefully that's enough to get us back into the positive trend here. I'm going to revisit this to see if that is the case. But overall, I just feel like the developers have been going in a way that is not conducive to keeping a player base active and engaged. I don't really care about the weapon updates. And maybe I'm in the minority. And if that's the case, that's great. But I would say that the graph doesn't lie. We are seeing massive drop down. Considering that as of right now, as of recording this, there's only 10% of the all time peak currently playing. That was only three months ago. It's not looking great. And I really enjoy this game. So this is kind of like my love letter asking the developers to please give us something to sink our teeth into, man. We want to play. We want to keep going. And we want to spread liberty across the galaxy. But we can't really feel incentivized to do that when all you're doing is balancing weapons and not giving us something to do. I can't only do the same task a million times 
at the highest difficulty until I'm like, what, what am I really achieving? If I get my ship to max level, what's next? <laughs> you know, there's not really much else to do. So for a game that's based on challenge, brotherhood, and coming together, it just needs to be a little bit more content there. I'm really hopeful that in the next few months, we see some really, really big updates from Arrowhead, and that maybe this shift in leadership could be what we need. I kind of doubt it, though, because I didn't really feel like the CEO was doing a poor job. I just felt like the direction of the game was taking was kind of aimless. And that's fine. If you have a great game to begin with, and you don't have a ton of aim afterwards, it is what it is. But just pushing weapon balancing out, pushing out a mech here and there, it's not doing anything for the player base. You're three months out from release. You need to push something new. So please, give us something to sink our teeth into. Because we're hungry, boys. I'll see y'all on the battlefield. Peace. We're getting glorious. We're getting up to mischief. Don't wait, because we're coming in hot. Let's eat some biscuits.